Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, let's continue with the second part of the uh, first lecture, okay, on the AI powerful tools in uh, quantum finance. Okay, remember last week we talked about the, the first part of uh, AI, okay, and uh, we talked about two parts. First, we talked about uh, the basic AI concept, okay, starting from the AI history, uh, the tuning test and also the basic theory and the classification of AI and also we talk about uh, the three major technologies on AI uh, for the new networks, the artificial neural network, the first logic and the genetic algorithm and uh, because of the uh, content okay, of the chapter 7 so we divide into two parts so last week we uh, talk about the first technologies, the artificial neural networks. And also we talk about the uh, basic biological neural networks and also uh, how we borrow the concept of the neural networks for the human brain to the constructions of uh, uh, AI machine. And the most important part, we talk about several important uh, networks and network architecture. Uh, from the feed forward networks, the cohormon networks, the uh, whole field networks, and also the feed forward replication networks. And uh, discuss different kind of uh, possible applications, including the uh, pattern recognition on the associative memory, on the whole field networks for the member association and the memory storage, and also the most important part is on the feed forward application models on uh, supervised training, including forecasting uh, applications. Uh, in fact, uh, one of the most popular kind of uh, new networks now during, okay, especially on the deep networks, is on the uh, extension for the uh, multi-layer uh, new networks example the feed forward percussion network with the inclusion of uh, multiply for some up to hundreds or thousands uh, hidden layers so uh, for that part I will uh, talk about a few case on our quantum finance for prediction using a deep network uh, probably in the week uh, 30 after we go for other uh, technologies as well so we will uh, come back to the deep network and uh, uh, in probably in week 13. So today we talk about the second two technologies. Okay, one is the genetic algorithm, and also the other one is the first logic. And uh, probably is uh, uh, I think it need uh, uh, around one hour or one hour fifteen minutes because uh, the content is quite uh, 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 intensive. Okay, so uh, let's start. So, uh, genetic algorithm in quantum finance for system optimization. So, remember when we talk about uh, different kind of AI, okay? Uh, those they are also uh, target for the construction of what we call uh, machine learning solution. But they have because of the structure, they have different uh, uh, specialist areas, specific area of application. So, for example, for the neural networks, mean on the problem solving and also machine learning part okay especially for the uh, uh, construction for the uh, network for the storage of memory and also for the training okay especially on the supervised training because uh, so for example for the uh, uh, feed percussion model you have the input hidden and output uh, layers and uh, by comparing the output layer together with the target output, you can, of course, okay, using the supervised learning to uh, uh, refine your model structure by regulating the weight. So uh, one of the applications for uh, new level, of course, is on the uh, machine learning and also for the supervised training. Okay, that, that is one of the major characteristics. And uh, for the genetic algorithm, Okay, later on I will show you that the genetic algorithm because it's based on the evolution theory. So of course we know 
the major characteristic for the evolution theory is how we can improve our capability okay, of the gene structures. So uh, by borrowing the concept for the GA, uh, of course, that kind of learning machine major focus on one thing uh, for what we call the system uh, optimizations. When we talk about system optimization, mainly we talk about how to improve the system structure or the system performance. So for example, by regulating the parameters. As I always say, any kind of system in fact you can imagine is a kind of uh, functions. Of course, uh, in order to improve the overall performance for the system, of course, one important method is to uh, improve the parameter they're using. So for the GA, one of the major uh, characteristics is to improve the uh, system by in regulating the parameter they're using. So the problem is how. So today we will make use of the first part of the lecture to discuss the base concept and the algorithm on the genetic uh, algorithm. Okay. In fact, it's not difficult. Maybe you have already uh, learned about this in theory. Okay, or in, or in basic concept during your high school uh, biology, I think. Okay, because in Hong Kong we have uh, uh, talked about this uh, uh, in the high school bio on the genetic algorithm for the evolution theory. Although uh, we talk about the basic, uh, 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 what should I say, basic concept and architecture, but uh, uh, these are the core. So today we will talk about how to implement that kind of uh, theory into a computer or a computational model, okay, what we call a genetic algorithm. And then the second part of this lecture, we talk about another major concept, the first logic. Okay, so we will talk about it one by one. So, evolution theory, okay. Everybody, uh, science did, I should say, okay, uh, taking uh, high school science, in biology should be or must be heard or learned about it on the uh, human evolution theory, right, from Darwin. So uh, from Darwin evolution theory, although it's not the uh, exact uh, solution of what we are now uh, working on, on the DNA, because at that time they only discovered the middle layer, the chromosome, as you can see, the X and Y. But of course, as I always say, it's already a very good start, okay, for the exploration of the uh, human evolution theory and also for the gene structure. Although, uh, as many scientists say, it's a evolution theory, in fact, is a kind of um, conceptual model, okay, but there are many scientific and biological evidence show that uh, it's rather true, okay. Uh, not only human, but all the living organisms find the earth, okay, some by some being for so many years, millions of years, they improve themselves by uh, what we call genetic algorithm, okay, if you believe in the evolution theory. Okay, because uh, in, the, in, in, in the human history, we have two kind of theory for human uh, 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 improvement, okay, for our ability. First is what we call the evolution theory from different uh, basic uh, gene structures to more complex ones during millions of years of uh, improvement, okay, uh, using the GA concept. Or the other one is what we call the creation model. Creation model means uh, there is some outside uh, creator create a uh, uh, human being. But of, uh, as a uh, science, so of course, uh, we are more, okay, intent, we live in the more uh, logical method, okay, by step by step, or uh, what we call uh, genetic, okay, uh, evolution. So today we talk about this. So uh, in the basic uh, Darwin theory, 100 years ago, okay, uh, he proposed to think first, all the living organisms, including human beings, they improve in so many years, for millions of years, in fact. Is uh, using uh, what we call the survival of the fitness. Fitness in the sense that uh, the fitness to adapt to the environment, of course, because you want to survive. So the question is how to do so. 
So uh, by using the evolution theory, uh, the uh, Darwin proposal of two methods first is what we call the uh, chromosome uh, crossover. And the second one is what we call the mutation. Okay, but all the time we heard about mutation. Uh, but uh, if you have learned the uh, evolution theory, you know that uh, compared with the percentage of 100%, in fact, uh, over 95%, of the evolution is because of crossover. Crossover is to, between the chromosome, is to increase the rewrite as you saw in the chart. So that uh, in the next generation or the next next generation, there will be some changes in the, uh, say for example, human being uh, capability. Okay. But how can you uh, have a, what we call a big jump from one stage to another is what we call mutation. Okay, and uh, talk, we will talk about it in detail, don't worry. But the uh, mutation cannot be too high, okay? Uh, in theory, by the Darwin, he said in his uh, original paper, in fact, it's a book, okay? And saying that the mutation should be uh, less than 5% of the overall operation. The main reason why is uh, if the mutation is too high, say for example, uh, more than 10%, there will be some uh, fundamental change for the uh, overall constructions. Okay, so, but if there mutation, uh, there will not be a major change. So, and many people believe that although the mutation is rather low, okay, in terms of evolution theory, but uh, <coughs> all the major change for every single organism, including human being, is because of the uh, mutation. So, we will talk about this. In fact, uh, the whole GA model, in the computational model, will be borrowing from this concept. So, we will talk about this. So. The whole concept, in fact, is not difficult, but uh, uh, what I say is uh, very important because most of the AI model nowadays, uh, in order to improve the model, uh, most of the time we are using the GA. And uh, in terms of the publication and paper and books, uh, because there are so many GA algorithm and mechanism, and uh, we consolidate it into what we call the EC, Okay, uh, evolutional um, computational theory, or evolution theory, okay, for some people say. So, uh, or evolution computing. So, uh, so uh, what I'm saying is that nowadays the free constant for AI, artificial neural ANN, evolution computing EC, and also first logic. So these three, uh, although they are interdependent, but they are closely related. As always, without the new network, you don't have the overall model, the brain, what we call. And uh, with the, the genetic algorithm, we don't have the system to optimize or to improve your, uh, your AI system. Or without the first logic, we'll talk about it later on. Uh, it's uh, impossible for us to model something very fuzzy, uh, uncertain. So these three, are, although they are independent, but they are closely related in terms of uh, uh, AI technologies. Okay, so we will go through it one by one, of course. Basic principle. So in a typical GA, involve the all foreign operations. So as you can see for the flow chart, in fact, uh, if you have learned uh, high school biology on uh, evolution theory from Darwin, in fact, the charts are the same, I think, if you have uh, remembered that. In fact, uh, in Hong Kong for the high school, uh, these are the uh, cookbook on the Darwin evolution theory. But I know for some US and Europe uh, high school, okay, they now the, uh, not encourage people to talk about that because uh, for some people, they think that okay, evolution theory in some sense, okay, have some discrimination problem, but for me, it's just a, a theory, okay? Whether you believe or not is a, another thing. It's just a possible theory. But I, what I'm saying is because we have uh, learned this for so many years, for me, it's quite natural because for after uh, Darwin's uh, propose or discovery, you can say, evolution theory, uh, there's so many hard evidence in terms of uh, human biologists and also for the genetic um, 
uh, discovery showing that uh, that sort of theory is quite true. But whether you can solve all the evidence, of course, uh, it's an answer, story, but as always, you can't propose something that can solve all the problems so that people can believe. Okay? But at least, it's what I call is a very possible solution. And uh, the most important part is using that kind of genetic reform for so many years in terms of uh, scientific and AI uh, community. It really solved a lot of problems. That, that's what we need, right? So, turn to the basic uh, uh, flow chart for the genetic health firm. So, the first part is that you have to have a population of uh, organism, right? So, in terms, it depends on the problem. So, we start with some uh, biological issue, okay? So, you are talking about some uh, a population of uh, a human being or a population of animal, you can, okay? Population. So, for example, a thousand. Okay, so you have a population of the uh, people or organism. Or uh, in our case for AI, it will be system, maybe. Okay, so we start with some biological model first. So we talk about a uh, population, say, for example, a thousand of uh, animals, you can say. So first of all, you have a population, and then you have to select, okay, the next gen, you want to say, you the target is to generation to generate different generation from one to up to say for example thousand. It depends on your process. Okay. So the whole story is the how to generate next generation. That will be better than the previous generation, right? Is the whole concept. So first we have a population group, okay, and then we select the parents. Okay, case by case. So example, you have to generate the next generation. Right, so you have to select, say for example, uh, five hundred times. So each time you you uh, select two parent, okay. You select two parent, and then uh, doing two operation. The first operation is uh, doing a crossover. I will show you this uh, later on. And then the mutation. By doing that, okay, the offspring will be a bit different, right? And it depends on the percentage of the mutation. After that, you put into the next population group. Okay, say for example, until you have a certain offspring. So you try to evaluate, you have a evaluation function, as you can see, to compute whether your offspring is better than the uh, pistolation or not. So you have some threshold. So for all those who are, who is better than the previous uh, generation, so it will keep into the next generation. So so say for example, once you have another one thousand for the next generation, which is better than the previous generation, of course the next generation overall will be better than previous generation, right? So you can imagine, go on and on and on after say for example one thousand or one million generation. Of course, the capability of this new generation of offspring after thousands or millions of generations must be of better than the previous uh, generation. So you may ask one important thing, what is the duration function? Right? So how do you write? Of course, in every single kind of uh, AI model, we all ask this, how can you test whether your system is good or not? So you need a duration function. So in fact, the duration function, of course, is, uh, depends on what you want to improve. Say, for example, for a human being, of course, uh, is the IQ or EQ test. You can, right? Because nowadays, for so many years, because uh, EQ, IQ test already exists in the in the physical world for more than a century, I can tell you. And they're very popular in 1915 or beyond. So the, it's not difficult to have a, a IQ or EQ test. If you remember in your life, you must have that kind of test in your primary or secondary, I think, or high school. The main reason why is that for every single government, they want to know the overall international performance for their offspring. Okay, not to control, but to have some understanding, see whether we have to do more uh, improvement in education. Okay, uh, here in China or in Hong Kong, in the United States, it's the same. Okay, all the time when uh, uh, students are primary or early secondary, which means for the age uh, 
uh, uh, from beyond, uh, uh, earlier than 15, okay? Because of earlier than 15, you still have a, a chance for further improvement in terms of education to improve for international properties or ability. So that's why we have that kind of test. So for the test, it's not a problem. Okay, so the whole uh, uh, kind of GA concept, in fact, is not difficult to implement and is rather makes sense. So whether it's true or not is another story, right? So why Darwin have the claim that uh, survival for the fitness? So it's the main thing, because if it's true, the whole genetic algorithm will be true, right? Which means without the genetic algorithm, okay, that kind of thing is happening cause of a mutation for a gene, I tell you. It's a natural property. So um, if the one with a better gene in terms of the fitness, okay, it can survive better. So after million or thousand generation, of course, the whole population will be improved in some sense. So of course, the evolution theory uh, exists. So that's a tricky problem. Right? So according to this evolution theory, an offspring which is uh, more fit, which means have a better score in the evolution, uh, in the evolution function score, of course, uh, it has better chance to exist or to further uh, extend in terms of population, which means have a better chance for generate new generation. So it's what we call the evolution theory. So of course, now we know, okay, to control the uh, our capability is not in the chromosome level, but in the gene level. In, in fact, the same. Okay. Just like, uh, and we talk about the quantum physics, right? So whether you talk about the particle level or sub atomic level, it depends on how micro you zoom into your world. Of course, the more fundamental you zoom, of course, uh, it will be the more uh, varieties you have to figure about, right? But you never know. So the first operation, the population in this section. So the population is a collection of a chromosome uh, with a representative of a parameter set. What I'm saying is, say for example, you have a collection of uh, animal or human being. So you try to represent them in terms of their chromosome. That's it. Okay, I'm not ex say extracting the bones, but to represent them in terms of the chromosome. And then this parameter will be encoded is a uh, infinite length of a uh, uh, alphabetic of a uh, finite length. So of course, uh, in terms of DNA, we we'll know we have the five basic letter, right? So that is thing. So it's usually encoded as a binary value between zero and one, and you can be anything. But again, uh, as I always say, using a binary number between zero and one is more easy for you to do model. Okay. So that's all. It depends on your uh, uh, problems. So to initial model, usually there is a random number generator at the beginning. So for a chromosome of link M, the possible number of different chromosome string, of course, is 2M, which means if the chromosome level is a link M, which means that you have M number of choice for every single element in the chromosome. So the number of combination, if there are only zero or one, it will be 2M, right? Because every single node, you have two choice either zero and one so the total number of uh, possible population will be two to the power m so sufficient good enough for you to generate a very very big uh, population right so uh <coughs> fitness function so a uh, duration function f is is applied to the population to compute the fitness value for the chromosome the evaluation function can be varied from different problems. Okay. For example, in terms of uh, optimization problem, ethics, it can be accumulated returns for a period of time, say, for example, two months, in terms of finance. It can be anything. For uh, uh, daily uh, trading, of course, uh, you can talk about oh, the average day trade return. So it can be different from different Problem. Of course, it's not difficult to, for you to set the duration function. It depends on the problem you want to solve. Because all the time you want to improve your result. Right? So all the time is related to your problem. 
So say for example, it's a four cast power. It will be the uh, minimize the four cast error, right? So all the time the um, duration function not all the time is maximize something. Maybe sometimes it's minimized, but of course there will be some direction, right? So for example, for a trading system, point trading, of course you have to maximize your return. But either it's a daily return, monthly return, or yearly return, of course, depends on what you need, right? So for example, in a day trade, of course, you want to improve the overall daily return. So it's not a problem for you to set the duration function. But of course, even for a same problem, if your duration function are different, which means your focus are different, of course, the result are totally different, right? So you have to remember that. So it is very important that the whole GA remains in the form as only selection criteria for the chromosome performance. And uh, uh, as what you can see is, uh, so during the whole process, what we have changed is the some parameter in your system. So example, uh, if you want to build uh, feed forward blood percussion networks to do the forecast. So uh, what are the parameters? Many. It can be the number of uh, hit node. It can be okay the size of your uh, hit node and number of layers you have. It can be the initial weight you have. So it can be anything. But most of the times, uh, for me, I will use uh, the genetic algorithm to choose uh, the basic parameters. For example, the number of uh, uh, hidden node or number of hidden layers, that sort of thing. Because um, uh, if you are experienced in using new network, you know that there is something very basic uh, we all don't know. We have to try and error. Okay. So before we have the GA, you have to try and error. Means that uh, you have to try from different parameters, maybe randomly, for many times until you choose the best one. So GA, in fact, for somehow provide you are more what I say is a. Uh, more scientific way for you to choose a good set of parameters for you to define your own system. So it can be anything. So for example, for the any new networks, you have to define the learning momentum and learning rate, right? As I mentioned in the last uh, uh, lecture. So that sort of thing also is, can be set as a parameter for your uh, GA chromosome. So to justify for a stopping criteria for GA, of course, you have to set a threshold, which means for how many you can stop. So it can be controlled by two factors. Either is your evaluation result. So for example, uh, when the fitness score over 85%, okay, in your scale, you can stop. Or to be say, maybe uh, either, either, is over 85% or over 1,000 generation. So you, you must do that because um, for some system, maybe no matter what, it cannot attain this 85%. If you don't set the number maximum number of generation, you your whole system will be never end, right? Which means, well, what I'm saying is, uh, uh, you come into a ball card that long. <laughs> so it doesn't mean that there is problem for your system, but it's <coughs> only tell you that uh, there is some natural limitation for your system <coughs> for further improvement so that part is important so all the time for me i will suggest students is uh, uh you set the factual value for your reversion function for stopping criteria and also the maximum number of generation okay very important okay for me uh at least i think uh, a thousand generation is good enough but of course it depends on your problem if your problem is very complex, maybe it take a long time for a thousand generation. As I talked with many students years before, is uh, in the old days when, when I was uh, computing not so fast. Uh, calculate thousand generation maybe take one week. I'm looking. But nowadays, for any uh, notebook computer, even okay, if you have sufficient memory. So memory is very important because uh, maybe your system is. Uh, uh, have a lot of data. You have to put all into the uh, WAM, right? So uh, if you have sufficient memory, say for example, 32 WAM, and uh, calculation thousand generation, maybe maximum take you one or two hour talk. So one thousand generation is uh, easy, not difficult to attain. Okay, but uh, as a <coughs> GA model, 
I think the thousand generation is good enough. Okay, parent selection. Okay, uh, parent selection we have a uh, different type. Okay, but the most easy one is what we call a uh, Russell View uh, parameters uh, parent selection scheme. Okay, in which the witness function is assigned uh, fitness to all chromosome, and this witness level is used to associate with a property, uh, probability, which means there was some higher probability, some lower probability, and then you turn as a, a Ross wheel uh, 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 selection, and then you come up with your uh, choice. Okay, so that kind of thing is the most uh, 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 natural one. But of course, uh, if you don't know uh, the details, you can have uh, every single uh, parent equal probability. But sometimes it should have a fitness function for some have a better chance to generate the next generation all the time with something like this. Okay? And the probability function can be choosing something like this. It can, or you can define your own. Okay, it depends on your problem. Uh, of course, it should be make sense. Okay, so for example, for this one. Cost of implementation. So, in fact, uh, for the cost of uh, is uh, not difficult to understand if you have uh, learned this a bit in your high school. Uh, basically, we have two kinds of cost over. So, say for example, you have to have two uh, chromosome pattern. Okay, this one and this one. The most simple one is what we call the one point cost over. So, you random select one location, and then it's the current point. The offspring will be the one that exchange fit. Okay, the chromosome string. So they will be the offspring. So we call this the one point crossover. Multi point crossover is uh, you have uh, more than one point for the switch, and then there will be some uh, more variety. But again, uh, you can't have too many crossover. I, I compare with the length of your string, right? So for this, it, it's too much. <laughs> so normally, it's, uh, uh, it should be less than uh, 10%, I think. Okay. So normally it's a one point cross over or two or three point cross over. More than three point cross over unless your uh, chromosome string is very really long. So it depends on how big your data is, right? So it depends. But uh, remember, uh, cross over the main concept is to exchange information. Okay, it's not mutation, so it should not be too what should I say too frequent for the cross over. One or two most of the time is. Uh, uh, quite enough. Okay. Uh, mutation. Mutation is, uh, in fact, the whole mutation is simple. In fact, you choose a particular, for every single uh, chromosome element, you try to generate a uh, random number. Okay, say, for example, when it is uh, uh, more than 95, okay, you will change from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0. That's all. Okay. So you can change when. You can see if the mutation level is too too much, right? More than ten percent or up to thirty percent. After because you, you have to do it in every gene, right? So after uh, one mutation generation it will be totally different. So the mutation rate uh, should not be too high. So the in terms of the original paper is uh, we have to make it uh, uh, maybe Okay, less than or equal to five percent of the probability, but it is important because uh, mutation can provide a total step jump, okay, of the uh, genetic performance. So it's important. Okay. <clears throat> uh, in the total uh, overall theory for mutation, in fact, we have uh, five different process: the deletion, duplication, inversion, insertion, and translocation. And this chart show you all those. Things. Okay, you you have time. You can tell on that, especially when you try to do some ongoing research on the uh, genetic form on mutation. So that's cool, and you understand. Not difficult, in fact, but uh, uh, now become very popular because, uh, as I mentioned beforehand, uh, genetic form is rather popular in terms of uh, system optimization for the AI system. So implementation. So based on this, uh, in fact, uh, you can, according to your problem, to uh, generate a lot of new generation. And each generation, in fact, is the system with different parameters. 
Okay. So, uh, for example, just I mentioned beforehand, uh, for you using a new network, all the time you have to select the number of neurons, right? The number of layers for multi-layer system, or the number of uh, and the figures for the uh, learning rate and learning momentum. This that four thing all the times uh, is rather common uh, for the scientists, AI scientists to choose the best combination by using the GA. So, and then in terms of the Number of generation for my recommendation is uh, should be uh, at least 500 iteration. Uh, 1,000 is quite safe, but it depends on your uh, problem capacity. Maybe it take a long time for 500 generation. So in that case, maybe you stick to 500. But uh, when you less than 500, it's not so safe because uh, it needs sufficient generation to produce some more uh, significant result. So it depends okay, on your problem. So application. So uh, as uh, I mentioned beforehand, <coughs> genetic algorithm is uh, good at two things. First, it's on optimization for the choosing of uh, best parameters. Okay, and the second one is uh, for some <coughs> complex problem like the scheduling problem, how to choose the best combination or how to choose the best uh, routing. That sort of thing. It's very common in terms of uh, GA. But uh, for AI optimization, all the time is uh, on the uh, parameter optimization, just like you saw in the chart. For one of my research on the uh, first new networks, on the uh, choosing the best parameter for the forecasting system for the deep networks, I, I will mention that in in the second last lecture. And uh, mm -hmm. I'm using a very typical genetic algorithm to select the top ten first C financial signal. So for this is uh, in terms of the uh, signal gen uh, generation and also signal uh, selections. So for example, when you have a lot of input in your new networks, so for example, over a thousand. So of course, uh, you won't put all of them into your network because uh, by doing that, it's uh, what I call forfeiting and also it takes a long time. So what we're doing, okay, normally is uh, using some pre-processing step for you to choose the best 10, so for example, okay, and then after that, in your execution model, you only need this 10 uh, uh, input in the actual system. So uh, it's rather common, which means you can use that to choose your parameters or use them to choose your input node. You can do so. so but of course, provided that you have a lot possible uh, input for you to choose and you don't know which one is the best. So you are using GA to choose the best combination. So it all depends on problem. So as I would say, uh, the most important part is uh, uh, you have to know your problem first. And the tools itself is not difficult. But of course you have to know the basic uh, constraint and also property for your uh, system. Otherwise, again, uh, you don't know how to choose your uh, gene and also parameter for crossover and for mutation. Okay. So it depends. So the next one we talk about physics logic. So uh, as mentioned before, okay. In fact, uh, if you take a look on every day what you are doing, uh, as I always say, because uh, not everyone is a science student, okay, or a math student. Uh, all the time we handle things is in not what we call is uh, accept. Wait. So as I always say, not everything is one one plus one two. So for example, when you try to uh, do exercise, okay, of course, uh, all, all, all the students want to get 100%, of course, but you, you can't, but you will try your best. So it's what's different. So say, for example, when you try to catch a bus, okay, again, you try your best, right? So try your best is the best chance for you to get a bus. So you don't wait for everything certain to do so. So everything, in fact, is not uh, exact. Uh, scenario. So we call it, of course, uh, we call it first. In fact, uh, for the decision making all the times, uh, we again, we, we, we don't have the exact term. So for example, for the uh, everyday when you uh, get up, okay, and check for the weather. So whether it's hot or wet or cold or cool, okay. In fact, you won't ask yourself what, what is the temperature because you, 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 you are not the uh, thermometers. But of course, some ideas of the degrees of 
the uh, uh, a heat or cold. Okay, for you, of course, you are already good enough for you to make some uh, decision. So this one is uh, all the time when you try to make some decision, we don't know exact okay the environment, but we have some idea. So you can see all the things we know okay for the environment for the reality of what we call have three party first. They are firstly and highly uncertain. Second, uh, we need our knowledge and experience to handle them. And the third, the method and also the solution to handle them are usually highly chaotic or variable in some case, which means all the time we have to depend on the actual situation to do things. But uh, until it happens, we don't know. So everything changes, uncertain, but still we have to make our decision. In other words, in terms of scientific terms, is everything in fact is quite chaotic and unpredictable. But we still have to make the decision. So example in finance. So uh, the graph of uh, first logic uh, for every ball, okay, it will tell you uh, uh, fathers of first logic is a uh, uh, lot of day, okay, and uh, it, it just passed away in two one seven, and uh, in <coughs> ninety five, uh, he have a very important paper it's called um, term what we call the first set. So he's trying to have a uh, kind of uh, what I should say is uh, mathematical models. In fact, it's a mathematical model. In order to model something uh, undetermined or fuzzy, okay, what we call the fuzzy set. So of course, uh, uh, don't worry, uh, in this lecture, I will tell you some very actual uh, example so that you have some understanding. So in terms of uh, computer science, it's, uh, not everything is zero or one, right? So you, you can imagine for every single set, it will be either zero or one in a binary system, right? So what they mentioned is, uh, in fact, all the time we are handling, okay, is not zero or one, is uh, between zero and one. So what we call the degree of fastness, which means, for example, when we talk about the today weather, okay? So today weather is uh, uh, not hot and not cold, but it's cool. So how can we <coughs> specify cool in terms of a computer system? So if cold is zero, hot is one, so cool will be somehow 0 0.65. That's all. So of course, uh, uh, not every single problem is so simple, right? So uh, what does the data talk about is uh, that kind of okay, a conceptual model. Okay, uh, we have another kind of a mathematical model to handle this sort of thing. And, uh, and for now, for the computer system, is uh, how to put it into a computer system. So, so that's why we have a new kind of a, a mathematical model, in fact. It's what we call physical logic. Okay. So we'll talk about this in the, this part of lecture. Not difficult. So in fact, as a day observation is very sensible, uh, everything in fact is not certain and uh, quite uh, explicit and uh, not hundred percent true or not hundred percent zero percent false. So it's all the time is sometimes is uh, not certain. So remember when you talk about the uh, hanging spread uncertainty principle, either the cat is uh, dead or alive. In fact, we have that kind of consensus. But uh, one important thing from uh, Hankins spread model is that uh, uh, it's, it's, it's even more funny is uh, what Hankins spread talk about is uh, the cat is either uh, dead or alive, but uh, coexist in different stage. Because nowadays uh, we uh, try to explain that uh, every single reality, in fact, all happen at the same time in different neurons. So when you talk about the multi neurons theory, until you open the box and see the cat. So the theory is uh, until you open the box and see the cat, that variety will all collapse to a single one. So for example, we have a million different kinds of neurons, okay, as uh, defined by the uh, Feynman path integral, right? So, which means it can represent different stages of the cat from zero to one. So not until you open the box, all this variety will fall into only one. Why? Because you open the box. So it falls into one variety. 
So uh, in terms of first logic, it's a bit uh, simpler in some sense. It's not talking about the multiverse, but talking about the existence of the multi realities. Okay, not until again, not until you make the decision. It can be anything between zero and one. So you you can see the concept are closely related, but uh, in terms of uh, Hanging-Spur theory, is uh, even more precise. Okay, in the sense that it tell you tell you how to uh, do the durations okay, to handle that simultaneously so uh, for the uh, first logic okay uh, we have what we call the ICMR model uh, four step model okay so first of all you have to identify the problem I model and then you have the uh, C model the catalyzation module which means you have to classify into different what we call the fuzzy terms and then you have the fuzzy moderate. So how to moderate. And at the end is what we want to do is the reasoning, how to ask the question from you. So we have four positive. You identify it, you classify, you model, and then you reason. And also uh, in some book, we would say the reasoning process is what we call the inference. So you ask it. Okay, so for example, when you build uh, with the uh, forecasting model, so first of all, you try to identify different kind of uh, weather situation, right? Cloudy, sunny, rainy, cool, and so on. And then you classify different stage. So you have different kind of uh, 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 temperature uh, scale, hot, very hot, that kind of thing. And then you try to build a uh, 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 model to model it. Okay, we we'll talk about this. And after that, of course, you want to ask. So what happened? <laughs> okay, so for example, when the temperature is cool uh, and uh, really wet, but not raining, so we have a uh, eighty-three chance it is raining. So the decision is uh, you probably bring an umbrella. That's all. Right. Okay, so uh, in fact, it's a very typical kind of uh, first system. system. Is all the time you make decision is something like this. For example, when you get up and uh, you see. Okay, cloudy, and uh, the road is red, but it's not raining. So you may ask uh, whether I should bought an umbrella or not. In fact, it's a fuzzy decision. But you have done it uh, mentally, okay, or, or subconsciously, you don't know. But in fact, it's uh, some kind of fuzzy decision making. Because why fuzzy is because every single input you have is not exact, right? It's not exact. What, what is exact is when, when you get up uh, very, very hot and the road is dry, and uh, in fact, there's no any sign of anything. Of course, you, you, the, the decision for you to bring an umbrella is almost zero. But uh, again, it's uh, all the time when we talk about first logic, it's all the time it's very difficult to have 100% or zero. All the time it should be between. But it will be very close to zero, of course. So, uh, uh, so in, in that case, it will, it will, what will collapse into a crypt set. Right? So, first identification module. The first one. So this module focuses on the determination and the identification for the first C variable being used. So uh, again, it's not uh, uh, true or false, but it's a kind of uh, uh, how do you define the whole problem? Okay. So of course, uh, the most important one is, uh, for example, if you want want to use a first logic to represent the following statement, uh, John is the tall. The first variable. You are using, of course, is the height, right? Although this uh, quality does not appear in the statement, but conceptually, of course, you are talking about that, right? Fair, fair. And what you represent that, of course, uh, is the height for that particular boy, right? So, however, consider the other statement. Most of the students are in the class at all. So, in this case, if we want to represent the statement using fuzzy logic. The first variable we're using should be the quality height, provided it should be the quality most. Okay, so so the, the main point for first logic is how to represent the cost of most. Okay. This describes the quality of the uh, proportion of a student that are told in the car. So how you can do this? So we have the first model. So we come over our next one. Characterization. So let's uh, show you. So in uh, make a very simple case for the height for a student, okay, make, uh, it's easy to understand. 
But if you are genius, you can apply this to any problem. Okay, same. So based on the first variable being identified, so we focus on the height for a student. So we can define three uh, fuzzy set. <coughs> so think about that. Short, average, and tall. So uh, it depends, of course, the problem. So for example, the problem in primary school is different from high school, okay, and different from university. Especially, I think it's a primary school and high school. So the so-called short in high school, okay, uh, maybe below uh, 1.55 meter. Uh, the height for average will be 1.5 to 1.65. And tall is, uh, say for example, 1.6. Of course, it's better only in high school or university, right? Not in primary. So all depends the meaning of uh, short, tall, and average. So that's why uh, it depends on the problem and the environment you're using. So I uh, saw so in this example, the one major characteristic of uh, fuzziness is that uh, it exceeds fuzziness in the boundary. So it have something uncertain, especially in the boundary case. So for example, when it is uh, between 1.5 and 1.55, is what I call overlapping region. I think the beauty for the first logic is that uh, it ex you allow you to exist in the overlapping region. Uh, I can tell you two reasons because uh, in the old transition model we don't have this, right? I just saw what. But how can how can in the actual world we handle the overlapping case, the the, the middle case especially the overlapping case between the one that is okay tall enough in the short case or uh, uh, although it's effort but it's quite short in the average so that kind of thing so I, I think the beauty for the first logic is to handle that kind of thing okay and the one uh, beauty of that kind of technology is in fact the whole world is always something like this okay not excess short average and tall you can't of course it, it's a it's a so for example a normal distribution right so in other words not always clear boundary so that is the beauty. So uh, also that the characterization for the first essay is up to the system designer. So it's, it's all the time is very AI in the sense that everyone have different design. So how can you make the best one? Of course, uh, depends on experience or depends on the experiment user. Okay. So because you, you check for the system by seeing the result. So that's why we need experimental result and doing many trial and error and experiment okay okay some actual thing let me show you the slide first okay so in this one uh that that's why it's important right as a first course of uh, first logic i always do so so how to evaluate the degree of uh uh first variable together with the score Okay, so let's see the beautiful chart first. Okay, so this is the the chart of uh, what we call the fuzzy membership function. Uh, we call this the uh, FMF. Okay, for the height for a school of students. So we have the 1.4, 1.5, 1.6, 1.7. So of course, uh, this the first section is short. The second average. The third tall. So we are doing that. So these three are the three, what we call the first membership function. So with their student, student, that is a 1.63 uh, height. So by using the first logic, so we have a, let's take a look, we go up. So this one is the FA. So it will be uh, 0.23 FH and also 0.63 tall, which means Overall speaking, the the student is taller than the average student in the class, right? Because right, because uh, in terms of tall, the score is a uh, 63. In terms of average, it's 23, which means it's taller than the average student in the class. Or you can say the student, although it's the average class, but uh, it's tall enough, okay, as member of the tall class. And as you compare with the degree of uh, height, it will be more in the cost for the tall and uh, as compared with the cost for the average. So in terms of the uh, mathematical functions, we're doing that, okay? So again, uh, don't worry for this course uh, uh, today, is, uh, I just want to introduce 
the idea of first logic, okay? And uh, the mathematical formulation is just for you to uh, illustrate the ideas. Okay, I, I will ask you for this in the next time, don't worry. But just the, the major concept. So for me, uh, the most important part is the chart and how to determine it. Because uh, all the time, all the time when you try to uh, formulate your uh, first members functions, you have to, what should I say? You have to design your first variable and also design the first members function. So you may ask why I do so. Uh, it depends, okay. But from my experience, all the time when I have three first variable in this case, all the time we will using uh, these two shape for the two end and also a triangle in the middle. But sometimes you will be a, a, a trapezium in the middle. But uh, for that case, because they're quite close. So uh, from our experience, all the time it will be a triangle function. So it depends, okay. Or you can be a normal function, of course. But you may ask why I'm not using a normal function, but instead a triangle function, because using that kind of function is easy to implement. <laughs> okay, of course you can. And uh, again, in the uh, second lecture, when I talk about um, our new uh, <coughs> uh, fuzzy uh, DNA model, I'm using a continuous function for the falsification. So, of course you can. But again, in the original paper for today, uh, because it's just the beginning of the first logic, we are using very, very simple function, okay, as a straight line, okay, to, to show that. So that the uh, more easy to, um, what should I say, to formulate, okay. But in the original paper, in fact, it's a continuous function, what I should say, okay. But for students, all the time, I will show them some simple case first. But of course, if you want to work on this in your service sample profile project or research, of course, uh, you have to know the uh, detailed formulation, okay. So once you do this, uh, you have the, what should I say, you have some idea how to represent the real world understanding together with some digital signal. So you, you, you may wonder what I'm saying in this one is, uh, uh, although this chart for showing uh, the relationship between tall, FH, and short with the degree of fastness is rather simple, right? But it have a very important representation is to tell you one important thing is uh, how can you digitize some undetermined or fuzzy variable into a computer system. So you imagine when you try to build a new network for decision making and one component is the height. So which means you have three input. One is tall, one is short, one is uh, average. So by doing that, that particular student the input number will be what? You can see. For the sort, zero. For the average, for the average, 0.23. For the tall, 0.63. So, so in some sense, uh, first logic tell you well, one very important and basic thing is by adapting the uh, first membership function, there is a easy way for you to digitize any uncertain or imprecise input into your computer world. So what this chart showing about is a uh, first logic in some sense try to for you to falsifies something okay from the real world to the machine world or vice versa. Or vice versa. Okay. So that's why it's important. Okay. So another thing is, uh, uh, you will see one funny thing is, uh, in fact, as I always say, all the time the computer system, in fact, is the what we call the the uh, 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 fancy world, okay, on a digitized system. In fact, the whole world is not digitized, right? As you know, you can see it's fuzzy. So which means fuzzy, in fact, is the real world, okay? And the digitized system, or the digital system, or the computer system, in fact, is just a model. And you can imagine, fuzzy theory is just a bridge to bridge these two walls. So for example, when you try to calculate um, the height, and you will give, okay, once you have that kind of system, okay, all the students, uh, the first uh, height together with the outcome. So for example, uh, after two years, uh, uh, what is the height 
for instance. So, which means after that, you have some some output, and the output may be come up against into your decision, whether it's tall, average, or high. So, which means when you come up with the result, you have to turn all this digital information back into the real world description, right? Because all the time you have to some have to extract, okay, the result which can be understood in the real world. So, which means First logic in some sense is trying to convert something uncertain into something digitized in terms of the first variable and the value. And then once you get the result, you have to change it back to the first C terms so that it can be understood understood in the real world. So that's what I'm saying. Okay. So again it depends on the problem you're saying. So in terms of financing, it's uh, maybe your system not to forecast the exact high or low, but just to tell people one thing, uh, it's a bull market or a bear market. Uh, that is fussy, right? Because say for example, bear is negative one, bull is one. So all the time you have to output is uh, something between bull or bear. So of course it's fussy. Very bear or very blue or not so bear, not so bull or uh, pawn two degree bull and pawn seven five degree bear. Okay. That's all thing. So the reasoning model, the reasoning model is, uh, of course, uh, it depends on your decision making. So for example, another example is, uh, uh, so for example, is uh, uh, your system, okay, against a uh, decision making system in, in many expert systems, something like this. So for example, when you go to see a doctor, and then the doctor asks you three first questions. First, uh, what is your feeling, <laughs> okay, today? Uh, you say uh, in terms of pain, uh, well pain, pain, not pain, <laughs> again it's first variable. Second, in terms of your uh, uh, degree of FIFA, okay, you know all those uh, when your temperature is up to then uh, 77.5, uh, you got FIFA, but again it's fuzzy, right? So it's uh, no FIFA, well FIFA or FIFA. And then caught, okay. Uh, against fee first variable, uh, no cord, uh, uh FH or cord not. <laughs> so by doing that, okay, your decision support system or decision making system will determine what kind of disease you have. And then, of course, the doctor will give you the prescription. So it combined with uh, the first specifications and decision making, which is a uh, least of what we call the if then. In fact, every single express system is a kind of if then. In, in fact, it's a kind of pattern matching, right? Say, for example, if you cut a lot and then you have a fever, so uh, probably you are full. If you cut a lot with a fever and very pain, very serious flu. If you cut a lot fever but with the pain, oh, okay, it's not a, a, a flu at all, okay? Is uh, somehow is a uh, uh, very minor syndrome, so it all depends. Okay. So again, uh, it depends on the experience. So the knowledge base, okay. Again, uh, the knowledge base show you the, all those kind of combination. Again, uh, I just show you uh, as the formula uh, formulation, okay. And uh, of course, if you uh, want to know more, okay, you can read the paper I show you in the uh, reference. But there is a very good chart I want to show you, the Messing chart. Uh, I think I have. Is the that one? So there is a simple example for the generalized model. What I'm saying, uh, I want to show you a bit. Yeah, this one. Oh, sorry. So just uh, some case for you, you, you to understand. So in this case, it's an air conditioning model. So uh, in fact, it's a very realistic case. Uh, when I studied first logic in year 2000 or uh, years before, it's uh, uh, in Japan and also in uh, in US, okay? Uh, the most important application for the first logic is on the first logic appliances, including the uh, air conditioner. 
So why? Because uh, for the air conditioning, all the time is uh, first control. First in the sense that it depends on two variables. First, the temperature. The second is the humidity. Okay, for you to determine what is the degree of power you have to set. Okay, so for the degree for the temperature, we have uh, uh, very cold, cold, mild, warm, hot, very hot. But of course, for air conditioner, you only care about from very hot to mild, right? Okay, because for the cool one, it's the air condition. And uh, for the humidity, again, uh, it's from dry to well wet. Okay, well humid. Well humid can be up to 100%, I tell you. Well dry all the times in, uh, in here will be 20 to 30% or it's already well dry. Okay. Uh, but of course, all the time, it will be uh, about 15% for the function, for the air conditioner. Okay, so it all depends. So you can see, this chart shows you all those uh, first terms and also the degree of the, uh, uh, the digital degree it contains. So for the temperature, we talk about the uh, uh, mile up uh, from 17 degree Celsius up to uh, very hot, 28 or above. But uh, uh, as you can see, nowadays we can up to 40 degree, right? And uh, for the RH, is, uh, we talk about uh, from around 16 degree percent from up to uh, over 70 percent for very human okay so once you have that definition you can do something like this now let's see relevant the rule if the temperature is very hot and the hours is very humid so that is rich to high if the temperature is well hot and the hours is humid then set to switch to medium if the temperature is warm or RH is moderate, set the switch to low. Okay, so we have situation. So you, you have that. That is the chart for the power that can provide for your air conditioner. Again, you see it has uh, the low, medium, high. So you can see for many uh, air conditioner, you can set right the different power stage. So given that the temperature is 30 degree and the humidity 80 degrees, the diversification uh, scheme for the power by using the uh, Sub minimum method and support method are illustrated in the two slides. Ah, that's what I want to see. You, you have to spend some time to understand that. So that one is uh, what we call the uh, sub minimum method. Now you can see this one is the uh, degrees of temperature. This one is the degree for the humidity. This one is the setting for your uh, uh, air conditioner. So uh, we have two methods for the uh, first control. Is uh, first one is what we call the sub minimum. Sub minimum is something like this. You can see from the actual one. So when you try to make use of these two to determine this one, so what we are doing is uh, for the first one, say for example for the third degree. So for this one, you you come to this one, okay? And for the uh, root two, we will come up with this, and the root three. For the well hot, you come up with that one. So when they combine together, when they combine together, we have have this kind of chart. The what we call mass mean is uh, you try to choose the best, the highest one you have, and then the threshold you you do. When you compare with this, combine with this free chart, you will come up with this one. So that the final decision making for you to combine, okay, it will be that one. So we spend some time to look you don't have me. So you can see if you're changing, you know, from that kind of uh, 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 combination, we have another kind of uh, evaluation. It's not to have the simple sub minimum, but uh, it's a port case, which means what you choose is not the whole this level, but rather is this one. In fact, most of the time using this one is more precise for you to control. As you can see, this one is more close to a normal distribution. So this one is more a bit artificial. But uh, of course, it depends on your fetch control system. If you want it to be very simple, this one is simple. You, you can imagine in terms of calculation. And that one is a bit more complex in some sense. But uh, as I can tell you that when you do an experiment, you will show that uh, this one is more realistic to the realistic case. Because all the time, it should be something like this. But rather than it is a simple trapezoidal. So uh, spend some time to, to think about that. Okay. Uh, again, I won't ask you an example, but uh, 
is a main point for the first control. If you really want to understand the first control, you have to understand these two charts. And uh, for so many years, for a test student in Purdue, is that uh, using this fuzzy air condition is more easy to understand because uh, the air condition that you are using, okay, most of them I think, in here, they already embed uh, that kind of uh, fuzzy control system. You may ask how simple. Uh, for the air conditioner, you have uh, two sensor. One is to sense the temperature. One is to sense the humidity. Of course, all embedded in the uh, machine. And then it can be according to the actual uh, temperature and humidity. It can allow you to adjust it in AI. What, what, what they say, fuzzy logic. Is you have to control. Either you can hard set your, uh, your power or you let the air conditioner to control it automatically using this uh, model for the control system. So think about that. If you have a problem, uh, you, you, uh, normally student, I think you have to think about it for one or two days, I think, so that you have exact understanding of this two chart. And you will know what, what is happening. But again, if you still don't understand, you can ask me later on. Okay? But, but try to uh, take a look and compare. And then you will see how it works. Okay? Uh, first control system. Many. Okay, so for example, rice cooker, air conditioner, uh, refrigerator, and washing machine. As you can see, these are, have some very close relationship to two things. First, the environment. So for example, rice cooker is, uh, depends on the temperature. And for some even tell people that depends on the event, it's, uh, it can stand the texture, I, I don't know how. Okay. But of course, it's the humidity that control. Because the degrees of the humidity of that day, the power can be adjusted to make it better. But of course, uh, even more realistic, of course, is the air conditioner. Okay, is uh, what we can imagine. Okay, and refrigerator also because refrigerator again, it depends on the food inside, how much of it, what kind of food, and also the outside temperature. In all, in order to save the energy, of course. Same for the washing machine. Okay, all all, all the time, first in the sense that it will send the environment. And also, it will send the content it have for the washing machine is the how many clothes it have, but even for some will 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 sense the temperature. I, I I don't believe, but at least for the weight, which means how many things inside, and it can control the speed and also the time, right? Of course, produce the best result. So that's why it's so uh what should I say is so common nowadays. It's what we call the fussy appliances. And uh, in fact, uh, nowadays, uh, maybe more than 8% for the latest uh, electrical appliances, ranging from the air conditioner to the refrigerators, uh, are already embedded with some kind of uh, fussy control system. And the major uh, reason, in fact, uh, is to save energy, of course. But of course, for some saying that it can improve the rice core, say improves the rice uh, 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 test, I, I, I don't know, but at least it can save energy, of course, okay, especially for the air conditioner and also, especially air conditioner because uh, uh, a good physical control system, of course, it can save a lot of energy, as you know, uh, all the appliances we have, the air conditioner and heater are the two uh, appliances that uh, draw a lot of electricity, so the, a good physical control system, of course, it can uh, save a lot of energy because you will switch it on with the whole day, right? And refrigeration are different because a refrigerator nowadays, as you can see, is auto which switch on it uh, all the time, whole day, right? But it uh, basically, it's, it's very safe energy because it's an enclosed system. But again, almost all of these uh, have some kind of sensor to adjust the electricity so that it can save the energy, of course. So one thing I want to tell you, the last one is uh, some tips mm -hmm. for you to, well, on your uh, uh, group project, if you want to embed it with some uh, fuzzy express system, you say for example, is uh, you try to determine uh, uh, the market, okay, using some uh, rules, say for example, the uh, RSI, MACD, or uh, uh, moving average. So of course, uh, you can, by experience or your experience, you can start set up some fuzzy rules. 
But of course, before that, you have to, just like me, you to set up some membership function for every single term for the RSI. Okay, I'll show you uh, in, in the last lecture. Uh, the RSI, the oversell, overbuy, bullish, and bearish. And then for, for the other two, okay, let me see there, memory, okay, if you can. And then you can design some fancy rule. So when RSI is uh, oversell and the say for example, just that, and the one hour MACD signal line down cross rapidly, rapidly. Yeah. And then I then the chance of price reversal is very high in four hours. So you can see every time when I, I do chat with somebody, okay, and sometimes it depends on the time. Why? Because uh, most of the time, if this is uh, related to pattern, it depends on the time frame you are talking, right? Even for the other side, of course. But other side is quite different because uh, you can have a real time other side you can calculate. And then in that case, it's only need for you to design the RSI index at that moment, okay? And then of course, uh, the fuzzy uh, uh, strategies. Okay. So you can see, uh, the thing we learned in the technical analysis, in fact, for the pattern itself, so many, uh, what I was say is many students ask, how can we put all those uh, index or patterns into computers? In fact, first logic is one thing you can do to do so, of course, using falsification. But all the time, also you have to, uh, for you to design some first rule because uh, only falsification is quite difficult for you to, what should I say, to make decision. Of course, you have to make decision because you have some first rule. And you may ask uh, tricking problems, uh, how can you design some first rule? Of course, it depends on your experiment, okay? And that is the reason why now the people using MT, that kind of system is that uh, you have 2,000 trading record for you to what to check your rules, whether it works or not, and then you fine tune your rules so that it can give you good results. And all depends on the pattern so that uh, it can have some kind of uh, uh, decision support or expert system for you to do so. Okay. So uh, in the last lecture, I will give you an example of uh, firstly new deep networks to make use of the uh, genetic platform combined with the uh, deep networks and also first logic to do financial forecast. I will talk about this, okay, in the last lecture. But uh, of course, I will tell you some basic thing first, okay, so that you grab all the basic idea. But uh, I can tell you that. Uh, so you today we talk about two uh, kind of thing, right? And uh, uh, first logic and also genetic reform. In fact, the first logic is uh, very important as compared. And uh, say for example, this one, I, I, I will tell you the detail, okay, at the end of the course. It's a combination for the uh, genetic algorithm for the uh, Russell, I say is the parameter choosing and the signal choosing, and also uh, multi-layer deep networks for the uh, financial forecast. Okay, so you have a combination of three, three technologies. Uh, deep network, new networks, uh, first logic falsification, and also for the GA for the parameter choosing and the signal choosing. I will tell, tell you how to do so. Okay, in fact, we are doing that in daily basis. Okay. So, uh, this one. So, in this lecture, we talk about uh, uh, AI and also three basic components, new networks, first logic and GA. In fact, it's just the beginning because uh, nowadays AI have uh, so many tools. As you can see from this chart, new network, also we talk first logic. And uh, in the coming lecture, we will talk about uh, uh, three major one. Okay, people are now using uh, chaos theory, factors, and also uh, oscillator. Okay, very interesting. And then uh, after that, I will give you a uh, overall uh, case study. Okay, in two lectures, I think. Uh, one is on the uh, uh, quantum pass model, and also the other one is the, the deep networks. Okay, it depends on the progress. And uh, also, uh, I think the most important part is uh, uh, trying to make use of all these uh, technologies for you to build some useful applications in terms of, uh, in this course, for the uh, financial prediction and also the uh, multi agent based uh, uh, trading system. Okay, so, 
So next step, okay, and uh, we stop here. And uh, in the next lecture, we talk about two uh, famous objects in the finance and also in AI is uh, chaos theory and also and uh, fatos, okay, in quantum finance. Thank you.